iki iki sawa mwanawaziri dr Philip Mpango pale mkoa Dodoma na leo ilikuwa ni katika mkutano wa, wa 15 wa bunge la jamhuri ya muungano wa Tanzania na kilikuwa ni kikao cha 45 ambapo katika kaizi cha 45 leo juni 13 wa mwaka huu wa 2019 tuamshudia mheshimiwa dr Philip Mpango akiwasilisha bajeti makabiliwa ya mapato matumizi ya serikali katika mwaka wa 2019 kuelekea mwaka 2020. Kwa tukumbuke kwamba kuna vingi ambavyo Dr. Philip Mpango amevuasilisha lakini kabla sija kutoka matangazo kutoka kule mkoa Dodoma kuna mkanganyiko ulijitokeza kwamba kuna maneno yaliongea waziri Dr. Philip Mpango akasababisha sinto fahamu kwamba bunge mda wote wakawa na shangilia wengine wanazomea kila upande kusifia vyama vyao mheshimu speaker mheshimu jemu mbodai sasa hivi bado ana hawa kwa kisha kwamba wabunge wanaweza kutulia na waweze kujadiliana mawili matatu na kubwa kwa kitu kwamba waziri dr Philip Mpango akimaliza tu kuweza kuongea kile alichokiongea na baada ya bunge kuwa sawa ni sawia speaker mheshimu jemu mbodai ataongea maneno kwa kisha kwamba jamani haya ndio yaliwasilishwa na mambo tayakubali baada ya kukubali baada hapo mheshimu wa speaker atainisha bunge mpaka siku ya Jumatatu ama siku ya 4 ambapo mheshimu wa bunge ataweza rasmi sasa kuweza kujadili bunge. Hebu tuangalie kinachojili kule bungeni. Nimeasimwa kutoka kwa mheshimiwa Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli ila rida yake. Mheshimiwa Speaker, naomba viongozi wote wa dini pamoja na waumini wote kila mmoja kwa imani yake tuendelee kumwombea rais wetu mpendwa Mheshimiwa Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli ili Mwenyezi Mungu aendelee kumjalia afya njema hekima busara na kumuongoza kwa kila jambo analolifanya kuliletea taifa letu maendeleo Mheshimiwa Speaker naomba nitumie fursa hii kuwashukuru viongozi wenzangu wa Wizara ya Fedha na Mipango ambao wanakuwa msaada mkubwa katika utekelezaji wa majukumu ya wizara katika maandalizi na uratibu wa bajeti hii ya Watanzania kipekee ninawashukuru Mheshimiwa Dr. Ashatu Kijaji naibu waziri wa fedha na mipango ambaye ni mbunge mahiri wa jimbo la Kondoa katibu mkuu wa hazina na mlipaji mkuu wa serikali bwana Dr. James pamoja na naibu makatibu wa kumi Amina Shaban Dr. Atibu Kazungu na bwana Adolf Ndunguru pamoja na watumishi wa ngazi zote wa wilaya wa ya fedha na mipango lakini vile vile ninamshukuru Profesa Florence Uoga Gavana wa Benki Kuu ya Tanzania pamoja na naibu gavana Dr. ya Mungu Kayamba Bila, Dr. Bernard Kibese na bwana Julian Rafael Banzi kwa kusimamia vyema sekta yetu ya fedha. Kwa nafasi ya pekee napenda nimpongeze Dr. Edwin Mohede kwa kuteuliwa na Rais kwa kamishi na mkuu wa mamlaka ya mapato Tanzania. Na ni matumaini yangu na ya Watanzania kuwa takuwa chatu ya kujenga taswira mpya ya TRA inayoongeza mapato ya serikali bila manyanyaso kwa wafanyabiashara. Mheshimiwa Speaker, ninawashukuru viongozi na watumishi wa ofisi ya taifa ya takwimu, ofisi ya msajili wa hazina na ofisi ya mdhibiti na mkaguzi mkuu hesabu ya serikali kwa utekelezaji mzuri wa majukumu yao. Na washukuru wakuu wote wa idara na vitengo, taasisi na wakala za serikali zilizo chini ya Wizara ya Fedha na Mipango pamoja na wafanyakazi wake wote kwa kazi nzuri wanazofanya kuendelea kulipa ushirikiano wa dhati katika kutekeleza majukumu ya wizara kwa ufanisi wa hali ya juu. Mheshimiwa Speaker, ninawashukuru pia wananchi wenzangu wa wilaya ya Buhigwe na mkoa wetu wa Kigoma ambao walinilea na, kundif, na kunifundisha kufanya kazi. Mwisho kabisa naishukuru familia yangu hususan ni mke wangu mpenzi na rafiki yangu. Mboni mpaye watoto na wajukuu wetu na leo bahati nzuri mheshimiwa speaker yuko mjukuu wetu Ana yuko mjukuu wetu Angela na yuko mjukuu wetu Filipo lakini pia ndugu jamaa na, ra- na marafiki zetu wote tuliopewa na Mungu asanteni sana kwa kuniombea msaada kwa Mungu kwa kazi hii usiku na mchana nami ninasema kwa kila mmoja wao 
Bwana akubarikie na kukulinda. Bwana kuangazie nuru za uso wake na kukufadhili. Bwana kuinulie nuru ya uso wako na kukupa amani. Baraka hiyo inatoka kitabu cha hesabu. Sura ya sita aya ya 24 mpaka 26. Mheshimiwa spika Nimalize kwa kumshukuru sana Mwenyezi Mungu kwa baraka zake na kuniwezesha kuwasilisha hotuba hii. Aina apende kuendelea kunijalia uwezo na unyenyekevu wa kulitumikia taifa letu na wananchi wake kwa uadilifu. Asanteni sana waheshimiwa wa bunge na watanzania wote kwa kunisikiliza. Mungu ibariki Afrika. Mungu ibariki Tanzania. Mheshimiwa spika naomba kutoa hoja Hoja imetolewa na imeungwa mkono kwa kiasi kikubwa sana Asante sana mheshimiwa waziri wa fedha wa mpango Mheshimiwa Dr. Philip Mpango Tunakushukuru sana kwa kutupatia hotuba yako ambayo imechukua takriban masaa mawili kuiwasilisha tunakushukuru tena Mheshimiwa Bungi ukiangalia title ya kitabu hiki mtaona ikiachowasilisha Mheshimiwa Waziri imeandikwa pale mapendekezo ya serikali kuhusu makabiliano ya mapato ya matumizi ya mwaka 2019-20 Kwa hicho kisema hapa bado ni mapendekezo ya serikali kwa ni Mheshimiwa wa Bunge na wiki nzima kuanzia Jumatatu leofuata ya kujadiliana huko ndani na kutoa maoni kuhusiana na mapendekezo haya. Halafu yuko siku tutapiga kura kila mbunge kwa jina lake kuhusiana na hoja hii ya Mheshimiwa Waziri wa Fedha na Mipango ili kuihitimisha hoja hiyo. Kwa hiyo nikupongeza sana Mheshimiwa Waziri, Mheshimiwa Naibu Waziri katibu mkuu manaibu katibu mkuu na timu zima za fedha na serikali kwa ujumla chini ya uongozi wa mheshimiwa rais dr john joseph pombe magufuli kwa jinsi ambavyo imeweza kuandaliwa hotuba hii au hoja hii ambayo imependekezwa bungeni ili usheheni mambo mengi muhimu mazuri kwa nchi yetu <coughs> mambo mengi sana yameguswa maeneo mengi yameguswa kwenye kilimo, kwenye viwanda, uwekezaji, miundo mbinu, elimu, afya, maji na kadhalika kila sekta. Tumeona jinsi ambavyo utitili wa kodi umerekebishwa na kuwekwa sawa. Vitengo vya ngoma vinalaumikiwa sana TFBA, TBS, Kenya Mkuu, eh Wizara ya ya Mifugo, Vuvi, Wafugo. Kodi nyingi sana zimerekebishwa kufutwa na na kadhalika mpaka hata mawigi yamekumbukwa safari hii. <laughs> na bado ikijaa kuna mapendekezo yanakuja, naamini wengine watapendekeza kucha, wengine kope nazo zingine, wanja. <laughs> na kadhalika na kadhalika. Tunapongeza sana serikali kwa kweli msingi tunaanza nao ni msingi imara sana. Hii kweli ni budget ya nne, ni budget ambayo inazidi kuimarisha ile misingi ambayo awamu ya tano ilianza nayo. Tunapongeza sana serikali. Sasa waheshimiwa wabunge tuna wageni wengi ambao ningependa kuwatambulisha. E, na ni wageni muhimu naomba tuwe na utulivu ili tuweze kuwafahamu wote wale tupa heshima ya kufika. Kama mnavyoona gari zetu zimejaa, sitaweza kumtambulisha kila mmoja wao lakini nitajitahidi. Na hii kabla ya wote naomba nimlete mgeni wangu maalum hapa. nafasi ya kuendelea na utambulisho nianzie hapa hapa mezani eh na namba simame hapa eh hapo hapo huyu huyu anaitwa Terezia Jacob Kavishe ni mtumishi wa ofisi ya spika ni mtumishi ambaye aliajiliwa kwa bado binti mdogo na bado anatumikia ofisi ya spika eh mkiona mambo yanafanikiwa hapa ni kutokana na support kubwa ambao tunaipata kutoka kwa watu ambao wako wako nyuma yetu wasionekana. Ni msimu 
mtumishi hapa atarefia hata katibu wa bunge anashangaa kuna nini kwa sababu mtumishi huyu ametumikia maspika kadhaa katika ofisi ya spika kwa mara ya kwanza kabisa alipoajiliwa alimtumikia spika mzee Adam Sapi Mkwao baada ya hapo akamtumikia mzee Msekwa spika Msekwa baada ya hapo akamtumikia spika Samuel Sita baada ya hapo amemtumikia spika Ali Semamba Makinda na mpaka leo hii bado kwenye ofisi yangu anaendelea na mimi kunitumikia kunipotea ni nadra sana kuwa na, kuwa na mtumishi e, katika ofisi yetu kama hiyo kwa miaka yote hiyo ni uaminifu hali ya juu sana nimeita kumpongeza na kumpa mkono mbele yenu anakushukuru ni mwangazi yeye tu ya umuhudumu lakini kwa kweli amefanya kazi yake nataka yote naomba tumpigie makofi ya pongezi Hello and welcome to Capital Television. It's a wonderful evening where we've just um, witnessed Tanzania receiving the draft budget for the year 2019-2020. And with me at the studio to look at the nitty gritties of uh, key issues on the budget is Mr. Joseph Shefu, who is the Country Managing Director of Ernst & Young, an international consulting and accounting firm. Welcome to the studio. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. The budget has just been presented by uh, Honorable Minister uh, 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 Philip Mpango. What is your opening statement to this program as we look on to some of the issues that he presented in the budget? Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I think as uh, Honorable Minister Philip Mpango said, it's a budget, it's a proposal. So I think what's important to also note is that this is a continuation of a five-year development plan, mm -hmm. so which started in uh, 2016, uh, soon after Honorable John Pombe Magufuli took over the the government, 2016-17, okay. uh, and this five-year development plan ends in uh, 2021. Correct. Yeah. So and and hence you have one-year development plan, which is uh, now 1920, 2019 to 2020. So, and the budget is geared towards implementation of that five-year development plans. Okay. So, I think Honorable President John Paul Magofoli, um mandate comes from the uh, CCM uh, 2015 manifesto, mm -hmm. which will be updated uh, in the coming year. So, okay. we'll have a new CCM manifesto 20, 2020. Should be in the uh, drawing boards now. So, and, and hence, industrialization has been a, a, a big key agenda that set the, f uh, set, the, set the foot right from the beginning of his tenure last year. We had seen uh, uh, major wins in terms of uh, economic developments, uh, in terms of setting up the, 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 the grounds to, for, for sustainable development in the future. So, and this, early this morning, Minister Mpango also read the, um, the priorities and also the successes that were achieved in, in the past. So, and just to name a few of the successes, and these are major projects as we launched. You're talking about the SGR uh, standard gauge railway, which 
aimed to uh, improve transportation mm -hmm. and also will uh, stimulate the economy in mm -hmm. terms of uh, once it becomes operational. Uh, and also we've uh, heard about the implementation of uh, the pipeline, the, the home uh, to Tanga, the oil pipelines. Yes. We also understand the development of the Dar es Salaam port, mm -hmm. uh, the new berth, berth 1 and 2, which will increase the capacity from 300,000 uh, vessels to almost doubling 500,000 vessels per year. Mm -hmm. So basically, in, in that port is almost doubling its capacity. But yes. still within the DAR port. Forget mm. about the Bagamoyo port. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, this is 33.03 .03 trillion draft budget. Yeah. How, how is this translating to a normal citizen, a normal Mwananchi out there in, in the village, a farmer, for instance? Yeah. Uh, when when they hear when 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 they see in the papers they hear on the radio and watch television and see that the government declares another 33 trillion um, shillings budget what does it mean to them okay so firstly the the, the government has been very prudent in terms of its budget uh, setting this year and you could see it's only about two percent increase mm -hmm. compared to last year budgets so and the budget has been allocated to cement uh, the successes that has already been achieved, just okay. to make it more uh, better. So, for example, yeah, we have these big infrastructure projects which mm -hmm. were initiated in the past, but then there are other soft, soft sides to it, like in terms of human developments mm -hmm. and also in terms of value chains, say, in the agricultural sector, even if the allocations in that sector is below a trillion. Yes. So. So for the normal Mwananchi, I would say they have seen the successes. First of all, it's translated from, for example, the consumer price index, which we have uh, been able to, to retain at a single digits. Um, we would see that uh, the inflation had declined from 5.3 and uh, up to April this time is, I think, 3.5%. And uh, the, the, the government aimed to retain inflation, consumer price index, within between 3.5 to 4 in the mm -hmm. coming year. And that's an area which touches on the Monanji in terms of uh, um, cost of living. So when, when should really Monanji expect to see, you know, the, the, to reap the fruits of this? Because, yeah. you know, the, the prices for rice, for instance, are still very high. Sugar is still mm -hmm. very high. Tea leaves, still very high. Yes, so we have seen the measures which were taken, say, in the area of tariffs, for example, in our customs. We have seen a lot of... Uh, uh, restrictive uh, tariff have been put in terms of uh, importation and mm -hmm. this helps to um, stimulate local industries in especially in agricultural sector for example but in terms of the local monarchy we've seen like free educations uh, increase in enrollment of uh, uh, school um, uh, primary school children's mm -hmm. increase in terms of availability of loans to enable uh, citizens mm -hmm. so from a normal family we'll see that uh, you mm -hmm. can actually enable to send your children to, to school but more important is in terms of uh, for the farmers, we have seen um, focus has been in terms of uh, institutional threat, uh, strengthening of the uh, institutions that facilitate. Uh, for example, uh, the government is looking at uh, reviving Tafiko and in the fishing industry, which has actually um, been um, performing poorly in the past. We haven't really nurtured that opportunity but also in terms of extension officers to enable uh, farmers to achieve more yield in their uh, farming activities. You're talking, you're, mm. you're actually driving me into my next question, which I was, okay. you know, mm. I also wanted to pick your brains. Um, agriculture sector is still the most uh, uh, highly employing sector in the country. Uh, and when we say agriculture, we also tend to include fisheries and livestock keeping. But if you look onto the if you look onto the, the the 2019 draft budget, the presented budget that has just been read, these are the least you know they 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 they, they are I can't say ill-funded, but they're least uh, you know the resources that are located into these ministries are really very minimal. Now, where is actually the commitment to the government on the most employing sector in the country? Where okay. do we see the government's commitment? Yes. Before, my, before you know, I, I get to, mm. to, to pick your brains again on, on, on industrialization. Industries, yeah. the drive, still the Ministry of Industries is, again, not very much um, uh, funded 
and that is where the government is, is driving the economy towards. Okay, so to start with, the agriculture is the largest contributor to the, to the GDP, apparently. That's correct. With, I think, 28.2% uh, mm -hmm. of the GDP. It continues, but we have seen that but this time around, in terms of growth, it is uh, probably, it has performed poorly in it growing. Is. Yeah. It has been for, for Five, a number of 5 years. 5.3% uh, 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 growth compared to last year. Mm -hmm. So is one sector this year has contributed greatly is actually arts, which is interesting, that uh, arts now is contributing 3.5%. How do you so. expect for a sector like agriculture to actually thrive if there's very little commitment to it? So I, I, I beg to understand. Okay, so to start with, the uh, you've seen Honorable Mpango mention about private uh, PPP. Yes. Private public partnerships. Correct. And uh, one of the areas that we can achieve much is in that particular sector if the government could actually focus more. So, but the government is actually try to look at the value addition in the sector mm -hmm. and it's strengthening institutions under the, the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, also in terms of uh, um, the entire value chains within the agricultural sector. But indeed, as you say, for the, agri for the industry to strive, they need raw materials. Correct. Majority come from the uh, agricultural, agricultural sector. sector. So we have seen now, we're looking at uh, uh, leather industries. So, and the DOMA, we are looking at the DOMA also in terms of uh, showcasing our, um, our um, opportunity in, the, in, in, in livestock and also in terms of uh, the leather industries. And uh, several other export processing zones in Bunda, which we're, f we're also looking at it, and certain other areas. So indeed, the government still has to look at it in terms of, but remember, the Ministry of Agriculture allocation is, it plays a role in facilitation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really play a role in actually investing in agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. It's in terms of policy, uh, attracting investment in the sector, working together with the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and also with the Ministry of um, Tasmania Investment Centre mm. and other stakeholders. So I think the, what uh, I would really like to see is the Ministry of Agriculture coming out forcefully in terms of uh, implementing the government policy in agriculture. Mm. My, my engage private sector. I picked mm. the brain of you know uh, one economist and he said you know. To, to actually see commitment in, in, a, in a given ministry, such as agriculture, um, which is again, as you rightly said, the largest contributor, uh, is at least 10%, you know, yes. of the total budget. So, You're talking about yeah. 83 trillion, so at least 3 trillion could have, you know, been directed to agriculture, but yeah. agriculture is, is, is what? Agriculture has uh, 253 billion shillings. Yes, so, but what you realize also in terms of uh, First of all, we have to live within the means, mm -hmm. okay? so, and we really choose industrializations as a priority, but agriculture supports the industrializations, and we have made a lot of uh, improvements and uh, um, headways in agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. We needed to improve, for example, storage of agricultural produce and the value chains in terms of infrastructure, how do you get your crops now from, we have seen the bumper harvest in the previous uh, year, which helped maintaining our economic uh, performance to, mm -hmm. to achieving 7% growth with 7.1 intended in the coming year. So these are the area of agriculture in terms of, for example, in horticulture, we've seen measures in terms of enabling um, uh, more production and export of uh, horticulture in terms of storage. And, uh, and, and, and also in terms of farm implements, mm -hmm. to make more, them more cheaper and, mm -hmm. and, and value addition in the agricultural process. So I think now is more between quantity vis-a-vis -vis quality, which is also important in Correct. that particular sector. So I think a lot can be done in the agricultural sector. And of course, I tend to also agree whether we have fully um, exploited the potential in the agricultural sector as yet, mm -hmm. or, we, or, or rather we have been, we, since we had Kilimokwans in the past, is it like, is a fatigue now? It and, is. And we think maybe industrialization can work. But but it's a food for thought, but private sector can play a big role on that in terms of uh, get the right policy. But you can see improvements have been done. For example, issues, bottlenecks in the agricultural sector. You talk about land tenure. Mm. And uh, a lot of efforts have been done by the Minister of Lands and uh, Honorable Okuvi had made great efforts in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, resolving conflicts, mm. uh, setting up bank, uh, land banks for investments. Yeah, and, and uh, there's more clarity uh, <coughs> with regards to village governments and local authorities' role with regards to investment, land for investments. So, I mean, the grounds has been set, but it's only implementation. So we call upon the um, executives to, to actually walk the talks in terms of implementing policies which the government has put. When I look at, mm. when I look at the figures, 33.3 trillion. For me, um, well, I'm saying, wow, that's wow, that's that's a good amount of money in terms of you know uh, uh, budget. Um, then what turns me off from that point onwards is now how is this 33.3 allocated? Uh, you know, it, it really shows. If if you look onto the numbers alone, yeah. it really shows the 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 if you know they gives. The picture if the government is committed towards a certain sector they've done very well in the uh, in the in the health sector pretty well in the education sector but again um leaving leaving for instance the ministry of industries and trade and saying we're promoting the budget that promotes industrialization or drives the, the economy into the industrialization uh, really and that commitment that has been put there you've you've rightly said it's to facilitate but commitment of the government towards actually seeing things or seeing the ministries capacitated to yeah. attract investment, to create an enabling environment for the business to thrive in the country. Um, don't so, you think these two are contradicting each other in terms of governments, uh, you know, you, you said walking the talk. We want yes. industrialization, yeah. but again, there's little commitment towards that drive. Yes. So, most interestingly, um, is the fact that what does the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry actually do? Mm -hmm. So, vis-a-vis -vis Minister of Infrastructure, for example, mm -hmm. or Communications. So, Minister of Trade and Industry doesn't actually invest. It does policy mm -hmm. and oversee implementation of the policy mm -hmm. and enabling the business environment. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, what we're looking at is Minister of Trade and Industry, uh, and certainly I think there have been allocated funds for implementation of the blueprints which will help improve the business uh, environment in the country. But also when you look at the entire facilitation of industrialization is beyond the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Correct. Ministry of Trade and Industry really does the soft bit of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then you have the Ministry of Local Government. This is where if an investor want to invest in, in, in a local authority jurisdictions, so you have the Ministry of Local Authority also responsible for that. Mm -hmm. But if an investor is in the telecommunications sector, then you have the Ministry of Telecommunication also play a part to that. If in the financial sector, Ministry of Finances plays a part to that. So you can see that distribution of actual investments and mm -hmm. the role that the Ministry. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is not really a game of how much has been attributed to them. It's actually they're more what you can see as more of a uh, qualitative people rather than quantitative in terms of policy, engage stakeholders, uh, engage the government to make it uh, uh, attractive for investors, make it easier to do business and also support the country in terms of realizing revenue. So you could probably say, will they have enough money to do the uh, international trade centers participating uh, flying to, 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 to overseas to attract investments and so on and so forth. Maybe they may not have much of that money because, as you know, we have to do with the little that we have and there is austerity measures that the government is trying to become very cautious in actual spending. So You're watching Capital Television and with me at the studio is Mr. Joseph Sheffo, who is the country managing partner for Ernst & Young and we're looking on to the draft budget that has just been presented in the Doma at the, at the National Parliament, and uh, maybe let's let's put the ministries aside. There's a component of uh, the actual allocation of uh, resources, the actual allocation of you know the the, the monies into the ministries for execution, um, which has always been the delay, which has always been the case for failures to meet um, the deadline of some of the implementation of activities. What is your take? Where, where do you think uh, the government needs to really look onto so that, you know, there are no delays uh, when the 1st of July strikes, people are up in arms already and start to implement, you know, some of these good policies, some of these good um, action taken, uh, to be taken in the next uh, fiscal year? 
Okay, so I think that calls upon financial discipline. So the, the government had prepared a budget framework, uh, which certainly has been the framework that has been used to develop the budgets. Mm -hmm. So we have seen the budget outturns. Probably they don't really uh, achieve uh, as expected. But certainly what we could say is it's mm -hmm. no stranger. It's pretty similar uh, to our peers. As I said, you start with uh, limited resources, and then you're looking at sustainable uh, growth, economic growth. You don't want to develop industrial-wise, but you, human capital is not developing, and health sector is not developing. So it's a balancing act between the two. And the budget, apparently, the budget is not really readily available money. Mm -hmm. It's actually, uh, it's called, like, spend as you earn. So the salary for July or for August will depend on the collections that TRA does and other source of revenue that comes in July. So you have to match the two. So and then then, then you have all these uncertainties in terms of uh, uh, business environments declining and therefore tax collections uh, targets are not being met, and the government has to do with what the, the money that they have. And this is this juggling in with the limited resources. Is, that's what caused to uh, not being able to really uh, achieve um, uh, expected budget outturn. But that's no stranger. This is exactly similar to corporations in the private sector. Mm -hmm. They actually operate in the same way that they have plans to implement, but at the end of a year they find out actually that some of the plans can be implemented. But also halfway the year, it may become necessary to abandon certain of the plans to be able to meet certain other important priority areas. I think, and the financial discipline is important in that particular aspect, and the role of the parliament as an oversight is called upon uh, to, 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 to bear in that particular case. And we have seen in the <coughs> previous uh, year budget, um, um, report by the Auditor General, I think this was in the 2018, uh, not the most recent one, mm, mm. where he recommended uh, uh, more oversight on the budget spending and he recommended also in terms of maybe the budget can be looked at in a medium term based rather than a yearly budget which tend to actually happen very rapidly and uh, we, we fail to actually uh, execute what we want, okay. um, at least more decently. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, we have the governments, uh, like many other African governments or many governments in the world, that entirely or fully or by large and by far depend on taxes to finance its operations, its development agenda. Not 100% because we have about um, 11 trillion that has been de dedicated towards uh, development agenda for the country. But in terms of the collections now, uh, what has been the challenge, or what do you en envisage as the challenge towards financing our budget for the year 2019-2020, mainly depending on collections from the taxes? Um, correct. So, again, you, you, you're just going back in terms of uh, the source of revenue. So, in the past, we used to have donor dependency uh, greatly contributing to our budgets, and uh, recently there is decline in terms of donor funding. So. Mm -hmm. Increasingly, we have to live within the means in terms of uh, the government being able to be funded from own resources, which is taxpayers' money, other source of revenue, which mm. is non-tax revenues uh, from the government. But again, um, the teething issues which we need to address and which the government is addressing in terms of uh, do we have everybody who's supposed to pay tax paying tax and are we collecting the right quantity of um, amount of taxes? Mm -hmm. And uh, surprisingly, and uh, you'd be surprised to actually learn that we are not doing well. Tanzania is among the countries whereby you can go to TRA and say, here, Mr. TRA, is a tax I want to pay. And TRA will tell you, no, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want your tax. Stay away first until I do an assessment, then you can come back and pay tax later. Only in Tanzania. It's only in Tanzania, <laughs> yes. And that is, we have seen um, um, ranking, and, and, and our international partner tried to put ranking, which is called... Uh, uh, easy of doing business in Tanzania. In Tanzania yeah, correct. easy of doing business in the sense that you can be an investor, you come to Tanzania with your briefcase full of money, they'll tell you, sorry, we don't want your money, just stay away until, and there is 100 pa uh, paperwork which you need to do. And you're going to also, easy of paying taxes. Tanzania is also ranked poorly in terms of easy of paying taxes. Okay. And literally, you go to TRA and say, I want to pay tax, and they'll tell you, we don't want your tax. Who are you, by the way? Stay away first. 
then we can tell you what to pay. You should collect the tax first and say thank you. And now you say, no, sit down, let me know about you. Mm -hmm. And how much more can you bring to me? And that's what we want to see. And we've seen in the meeting uh, between uh, Honorable uh, uh, Dr. John Pombe Magufuli with a businessman in the country, we've seen the complaints from the really, really, those are typical business people. Mm. Yes, centering, centering around tax administration. So sometimes it's not about people don't, don't want to pay tax, mm -hmm. it's the easy of being able to pay tax. So, and, and but efforts are being made now to, to try to, to, to support all that process. Uh, the other sources of revenue which mm -hmm. the government could try to, to look at in terms of tax base. So issues around national identity cards systems, mm -hmm. uh, for example, to reach, to reach everybody. And this should be the priority. Uh, issues around uh, being able to know where your people are. So, for example, we still use PO Box, whereas our colleagues elsewhere, they, st they use address that he, this guy lives in this particular street mm. in this house number. More for physical address. Physical addresses, yeah. yes. So, being able to know your taxpayer is an issue. Like saying, like you can say, Mr. Thierry, do you know how many taxpayers you have? Well, it's a guesswork, which they have. But yeah. you can say, yes, I know, I have 10,000 of them. Then I can say, where are they? And say, I don't know, they are pure box, mm -hmm. so and so and so. <laughs> which location? So mm -hmm. like, well, Samara Avenue. But I think National ID, the certificates, taxpayer identification number. So. Everybody should have taxpayer identification number. Correct. Yes, and, 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 and then those are structural issues which are being addressed. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have more and more people coming into the tax web. But also other sectors that we have missed the opportunities is, is, is uh, in, in, in terms of um, um, w water bodies. Mm -hmm. So we are not <coughs> known to be exporters of, well, fish, except for Lake Victoria, which not doing very well, but Correct. along the coast, um, I don't know how many industry do you know in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam or Zanzibar that does, does, does commercial fishing and send uh, export to tuna to, 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 to Europe. Yeah. We well, don't. We don't, yes. Yeah. So, so I think those are areas <coughs> that we can really f also focus in and probably um, help us in, in, improve on our but we the other sectors, I would say, like, for example, yes. tourism has really improved, and mm -hmm. thanks to the Air Tanzania as well, uh, and, and, and also uh, the blueprints, which will also enable us to attract more revenue in, in, in the tourism sector. So those are the areas which will help us to, 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 to harness. But private sector is important. The, the more private sector you have, the more tax revenue you have. So that's the potential that needs to be looked at, and, and certainly government is looking at that. You, you have been definitely uh, observing the practice in Tanzania for the longest time. And uh, I'm, I'm looking in terms of promotion of industrial growth. I'm looking in terms of, you know, the, 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 the level ground with which the private sector can actually thrive in the country. And allow me to say, is Tanzania shy to impose trade barriers to commodities that could be produced in the country in order to promote industries, uh, job creations, tax collections in the country through mm. trade barriers, through, you know, mm. restriction of importation of certain goods to promote production in the country? Um, I think uh, typically Tanzania has always been wise, so to say, mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, balancing the macroeconomics of the country. And mm -hmm. this is when it comes <coughs> to trade barriers. But also to understand that we have obligations. Uh, we are a member of the East African community, for example, mm -hmm. and we are not really isolated. So if you want to sell your products to, to your neighbors, you're going to open up your doors as well for the neighbors who sell to your country. But well, what are you opening for? So are you opening for what could actually be produced yet cannot yes. compete? So interestingly, it's, it's, a well, it's <coughs> called a fair game. So if, for example, if Kenya allows you to export your sugar and maize, the Kenya expects you also to open up for them to export sugar and maize to your country. Okay. And this is, this is a pro common market protocol. So mm -hmm. You can't actually say, allow me to export sugar, but I won't allow you to, export, to import sugar to my country. So you're going to have a, a quid pro quo. And that's really the international relationships, how it works. But also most important is um, there, there is balancing act. For example, 
you protect an industry in Tanzania, it may be that you're supporting inefficiency in those uh -huh. industries, uh -huh. and they're not really, they take it for granted. Let's say, for example, you'll see sugar industry. So sugar industry has been pretty tricky at points, eh? when you could probably say we impose barriers in importation of sugar, then you see sugar scarcity, and then the price hikes. And therefore, when you allow importation of sugar, and then the price actually lowers down. So it's really balancing acts in terms of protection of industries. So one, okay. you, don't, uh, you don't want to promote inefficiency in your country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes allowing your local industry to compete with internationally, provided you've put level playing fields. So if, if for example, cement is subsidized in Pakistan or in China, mm -hmm. not Pakistan certainly, for export is subsidized by the government in China, and it's imported here at a cheaper cost compared to local produced cements, the government should take actions because Correct. that's no level playing fields. Our cement, local cement factories will suffer. Mm. So for that reason, that we have to impose tariffs, significant tariffs, to make sure that imported cements uh, is actually imported on a level playing field with local cements. And you, you pr it protects your local industries. But the government has done protectionism. You remember in the sugar, sector. You're, you're talking about back the, in 85, 86? No, they did recently. You know, oh, okay, they, okay. You know the government issued permits for importation yes, of sugar. They correct. stopped. In, at some point they normally stop the importation given permits mm -hmm. for a period of time until they see things and they grant them back again. So they've done that in, a, in, in a several ways. But again, what we're dealing now is because of East African community, uh, you have to make sure Kenya doesn't allow um, um, imported uh, cement or sugar into his country which find its way to Tanzania mm. and we've seen other time <coughs> had sugar coming in from the neighbors but those are imported sugar maybe to um, last last very last minute um, the budget the draft budget 2019 2020 uh, in your in your opinion my, my very last question uh, mr. Joseph Shefu um, do you think it is driving us towards the industrialized economy that we desire to see in the very near future? I would say industrialization is a, is a long-term journey mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the year, current year budgets uh, aim to support that journey. I'm okay. pretty confident. And uh, what you realize, we have major projects that started last year. This project is going to consume money for the next five years. So, and, and then and us, and we have limited budgets. We really have to focus on them to, to make sure we successfully implement those projects. Otherwise, we're going to stuck halfway with the projects, and we won't realize those potential in those projects. Mm -hmm. But it's important to focus on the other aspect, which is a soft aspect. We focus on roads, electricity, and all that, but then health, education, educations yes. are important because without people, healthy people, without educated people is important. In education, we need to focus now not on quantity, but on the quality of people. And mm -hmm. we've seen, of course, the <coughs> government talks about research and development. So that's very uh, important to see they are looking at reviving those research centers which were there in the past, which were, were not funded uh, in all sector, agricultural, forestry, and also in, in fishing industry. TIRDO, which is Tanzania Industrial Research Development Organization, which somewhere there in Sosani, mm -hmm. which is, has actually been uh, redundant for many years, yes. and the government is looking at it in terms of reviving it mm -hmm. and, and putting resources on it. Tafiko and, and a lot you yes, can you can you yes. can give and and also agricultural example. research centers which were heavily underfunded. It's important to say the government is looking at uh, at that, which is important. These are the qualitative aspects, not quantitative, and it's important. Joseph Shefu is the, is the country managing partner for Ernst & Young Tanzania and um, we have been looking onto the budget, the draft budget that has just been presented this evening at the National Parliament here in Tanzania and I'm totally delighted and grateful and thankful for your time uh, to have you know, looked onto these issues table. There's a lot to discuss. And we can only say all the best to the government, all the best to the ministry, and we look so much forward to this uh, budget. We hope it goes through after some time so that, you know, the implementation starts ahead and we move towards uh, our developed or semi-industrialized country by the year 2025. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's yeah. truly been an honor. And thank you for watching Capital Television. I'm your host, Austin Makani. Thank you.
been going at this year's festival. Well, the turnout at Vanessa is amazing as it is. Thomas, hello. Nice to be there with you. What is the purpose of this meeting and who will be in attendance? Talking about how African countries can stop relying to a large extent on... We are definitely seeing a lot of deeply political films either directly treating a political issue or with a political subtext. Don't miss the last special report between Capital Television and Dushwell Television at 9.30 p.m. Watch Business Edition as we talk to business leaders and experts in sectors that are transforming Tanzania's economy. To be rich, I have to be a business person. It's not an easy road at all. People need to understand. You must quickly think how cost effective are you going to be. Business acts as a way in which it can bridge that gap. Business Edition will keep you informed on the latest developments in the financial sector, extractive industry, Tourism, agriculture, energy, construction, and so much more. Meet entrepreneurs for creating employment opportunities. Watch Business Edition on Friday at 8.15 p.m.